Homosexuality is not a choice. So why does Allah punish the gay community? If you look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not talk about how you feel about somebody else. He specifically talks about people doing certain things. It's the action that matters. So you might have certain feelings, and if you look into the research on this, actually is quite interesting. Most people, and this is something that might come as a shock to a lot of Muslims, most people are actually not exclusively like just hetero or exclusively homosexual. It's a matter of social conditioning, environment, combined with internal inclinations and dispositions. Majority of people are going to be on the spectrum of heterosexual. That's the majority, the overwhelming majority. But social conditioning is very powerful and it can drive people. If you look into the graphs of how many people per generation, the percentage of the generation that's identifying as LGBTQ, it's just like rising up and up and up and up. And the question you should ask yourself is, wait a minute, humans have been around for like 100,000 years. This is a very rapid change in the way that they supposedly are inclining and feeling with something so fundamental as reproduction. Because like it or not, a homosexual cannot procreate in a homosexual relationship. The fact that we have some technologies nowadays that allow us to do certain things outside of normal cohabitation between the male and the female does not negate that. So the question you should ask then is, okay, wait a minute. Allah created us, yeah, we have some feelings, but are we being punished for that? Or is there something the society is doing? Or what's happening? You have to engage with this at a little bit of a deeper level. So the Quran never punishes people for feeling a particular way. It's always about acting in a way that is contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger commanded.